Welcome back, you filthy exiles. So, uh, I was on the search for a build that I really wanted to play, like something new and interesting and something a bit different. Um, and obviously Blazing Salvo was pretty much where I was going to go with things until I figured out that Crackling Lance could be just so much more powerful. So, uh, what have I got in front of me? Well, I took my Blazing Salvo character and I completely re-engineered it today. Um, and this will be a proper full balls to the walls league starter guide i have notes there's going to be three different trees i've done a mage blood variation and we're also going to look at a league starter that's not going to use the leadership's price at all and i actually in the process of my searching found that there are two gems or sorry not gems jewels that drop off the um the un unbreakable encounter in heist which will actually buff the shit out of your early character um and that we can sort of abuse the intensity stacking mechanic out of it a little bit. Um, I did a little bit of testing today and we'll cover off on that later in the video. Anyway, so what does Lightning, uh, what, what does Crackling Lands look like? Well, it starts off like this, this big AoE radius skill. And then as it builds intensity, it turns into this crazy fucking beam. And so the faster we can get our cast speed up, the more powerful this is going to go. Uh, now this does, this does sort of, well this hits 100% crit in the final tree we're at 100% crit even though it's not saying here um and yeah it's pretty damn powerful now we stack on righteous fire on this this tank is also super super tanky uh this build is also super super tanky um and i'll just pull open the tree for this particular variation of the build so the final variation of this variation of the build is about 110,000 um effective hip pull but I've done something with this tree to make it just a little bit better. So the obvious change in the uh, in the game is that we're losing the power of Defiance Banner and we're gaining Arctic Armor. So it makes sense to just use Arctic Armor. So that's what this build's going to be doing. So the defense stats on this build right now are not tuned correctly. But when we get Arctic Armor in the patch, uh, when the actual patch deployment comes out, we get a huge buff up to defense because we're going to take full advantage of Arctic Armor. The other thing that I've tuned out of the build is I've removed, removed the reservation efficiency that's being removed out of the um, the patch notes as well, so or being removed out of the game. So that's one another thing that I've kept in mind when actually balancing this, um, this particular build. And then beyond that, I've also adjusted Brittle down. So we've managed to get to 97.22% crit with only 6% effectiveness of Brittle. Uh, previously, it was 15 shifted down. All of this means, actually, we don't even have Scorch on this. Um, I completely missed that. Um, so what this basically means is this build does some serious, serious damage and has some serious, serious survivability. We're looking at this stage about four, just shy of 45,000 armor, overcap resistances uh, where possible. And there's a little bit of balance, further balancing to go into this. Um, there is an intuitive leap in the final end game, at least the end game, and this, when I say end game, this particular tree is going to take you all through the game. Should be able to do uber bosses without any, to, with, without too much, well, it'll be able to do uber bosses, but it'll be a little bit tighter of a struggle, but I've got a solution to that as well. So, what I'll do, I'll take you through a map, and uh, we'll have a look and see how this plays, and then I'll talk you through the, uh, the league start version of this build. I'll talk you through the moderate build version of this build and also the mage blood version of this build, which is going to be mirrors worth of investment. But uh, it will have you farming ubers uh, pretty easily, in fact. But uh, anyway, let's get into the build and let's have a look at some gameplay. Okay, so we'll load up a strand map. Um, this one has unique uh, bosses up, uh, possessed, less armor. Uh, it actually hits our block chance, which isn't necessarily a game changer, but let's get into it. Now, just noting that this actually does not have the correct gear, and I'm actually not even running the um, the the right penetration gem on this either. It should be lightning penetration. So the damage on this is actually lower than what it should be. But uh, anyway, this is what it looks like with scuff gear. So as you can see, just sort of rips apart shit with no real issues and no... Just doesn't care. And the um, the enhancements in the league to um, 
crackling lance is that the beam is actually getting a width increase so this is going to be a lot better for clearing maps and taking down bosses and things like that as well so as you can see it's just like the destroyer of worlds sort of build and this is no mage blood this is no melding of the flesh or anything like that just basically just pure endgame that being said does have awaken this does have awaken spell echo but the league starter version of the tree that we're going to have a look at does not So we'll just burn through this. As you can see, we can take some serious hits. And this is pretty comfortable. Now, will this delve? Yep, this will have no issues delving. Actually, we should be able to get pretty damn low down and delve um, depth-wise. So we'll just kill the boss. And so we'll just drop our... As you can see, it just rips the and boss like they're nothing okay so let's talk about this okay so this version here has obviously got some investment in it but what if you hadn't had any investment and you wanted to league start with this well this is what this video is for it's a league starter so let's talk about the league start with this with this beautiful pov that i have Put together tonight which has taken three hours um so anyway first of all if you go to the notes section of this pob and i'll just put my face in another part of the uh the screen so you guys can't see me overlap the stuff on that's on screen there we go cool um so i've actually went went through and added in the notes uh that sort of build the predicated sort of design of of this build you know how it, how it's constructed and how it works and everything so pretty much the, the big thing here that everyone's going to be like is, okay, well, the version you just showed us uses leadership surprise. You're not going to get that first up. Absolutely true. So what I've actually done is went through the build and I have re-geared all the gear for basically leveling uniques and shit that'll drop throughout. Now, I do understand Intuitive Leap is not necessarily going to drop straight away in League. If it doesn't, that's fine. We can live without, um, we can live without infused flesh. Now, this is a level 92 tree. Um, but I've actually scaled the tree as well. So this has leveling guides from, or leveling trees from 35, 55. It goes up to 75 as we start to branch out a bit more and up to level 92 when you start to get to end game. So I've covered off on all of that in the tree and this will be in the description below. So notes below, basically key uniques and what to level in this build. Now, Death's Rush is getting a significant increase being that it's now going to apply Adrenaline for three seconds on kill instead of Onslaught, which means we can now stack Adrenaline and that's exactly what I've done. So we actually get like three to 400,000 or 350,000 DPS out of Adrenaline because what it does is it gives you 25% increased cast and movement speed and 100% increased damage. So we are definitely going to be getting a death rush as soon pretty much any build in the game death rush is going to be the go-to it was already a really good item now it's just even better with the changes that's being made to death rush so the next thing that we're going to look at is the lotch tony or Ka uh, caress unique Gl gloves which are those blue gloves that drop all the time they're actually going to allow for 10 to 15 percent chance to gain power or frenzy or endurance charges so this actually does have power frenzy and endurance charges and that's actually in the build so the old items in the build right now but this also increases car speed it gives you some life some mana and it gives you conduit as well now if you don't want to use the um the the gloves you can actually go back and i found another option which is the relicash impatience unique boots so ideally when you're casting you're not necessarily going to be moving now if you are taking down a boss and you want that survivability that comes with being able to stand still and just take hits then this is going to allow you to do that and basically means that it just max caps your um your all your charges all at once from what i can see here though i'm not too sure how that works yet until i see it but it used to be where they slowly generated now i think when you stop moving it just they all just appear but anyway we'll see how that works now a couple of consider a couple of the other things with this particular tree itemization wise um it just assumes we're going to use this shitty gasless theater shield. You can do this with rare shields or whatever, but basically you get car speed for when physical ages is depleted. So if as you take hits, you get physical ages depletion, and that's going to be really good. Now you could switch this out for pretty much any rare shield, which is 
pretty much where you're going to go in the end game with it. But uh, I thought this was just an interesting shield because it's never really used. The Gull as a leveling item, absolutely the best thing in slot for Helms early on. Tabula Rasa, because, you know, we're leveling from the start of the game. So, you know, Tabula Rasa it is. Uh, Goliath, Goliath Greaves, um, literally, you're probably not going to get the 19% movement speed. You'll get the 12% most likely. But this gives you the onslaught you need on kill. At series foible, so, you know, you don't need to worry about balancing your attribute points early on uh, very much. So, you know, pretty much a no-brainer. And mana um, management's super easy when you're using at series foible. And it's just a really easy item as an overall um, to get at the start of game. I would suggest getting a corrupted version of this because the corrupt, if you use it for like determination buffing or whatever, is going to make it a hell of a lot stronger. Um, Death's Rush, obviously this is getting changed and this is actually going to give us adrenaline going forwards instead of onslaught, which basically means that we're going to get stupid OP as we sort of level up and we get through our early maps. Um, now for the ring, I've just got the standard ring that I was using on the other build, but you, if you get anything close to this, this is literally going to do the job for you and it's not too hard of a ring to get. Um, so belt's entirely up to you if you want to use the new Worms Malt for whatever reason. Um, you could or any other new belt, you could you could go crazy. Um, so flasking wise, we're literally just looking at a life, Eternal Life Flask or any Life Flask, Quicksilver Flask, no brainer. Um, I do have a Cinder Swallow. If you don't have a, you don't really need a Cinder Swallow. It doesn't do anything to the build. Um, if you could literally put anything you want. Obviously, not a bottled faith. That would be stupid. Um, but yeah, you could do anything you want with this. You could pretty much just do whatever you want. Yeah, it's that. Yeah, this is how I've built this League Starter. It, it's pretty much a bash around League Starter that gets you 1.4 million DPS. Um, so we have a Granite Flask. We have a Diamond Flask. So that's going to give us a big buff to our crit, um, super important. And we want to try and roll it with cast speed because that's a game changer. So any flask that you run, you want to try and get cast speed because cast speed is going to be where you get a lot of damage. And this already has a 6.18 cast rate, which is really, really fast for this particular skill. And early game, you're going to mince through your, you know, this will get you through up through red tier into early red maps before you start switching gear out. Now, the next part I'm going to talk about is in particular with two gems, and I'm actually going to show you on screen um, what happens with them uh, and the combinations. But basically, there are two gems in the game called Nadir Mode and Apex Mode. They both drop from the Unbreakable um, boss, which is in Heist. Now, in the past, we've always farmed that guy and been like, that, you know... It doesn't mean anything, but the mechanics of these two jewels are really cool. And I'll switch to my other tune where I've tested this on to show you. Okay, so this is just a bit of a throwaway character that I've got to the side that uh, I decided to test this with. But basically, these two jewels work with intensity. And Apex Mode, so basically how this works is spells have 10% reduced critical strike per intensity, and we stack four intensity. So we would assume we would lose 4% critical strike chance, right? Um, but then spells which have gained intensity recently gain one intensity every 0.5 seconds. Okay, so, you know, we would gain more intensity if we were to use this with the trade-off being to our crit. What Nadir mode does is the opposite. So it's almost like the mirror, the mirror item mode, but, you know, these gems work in synergy with each other. So with Nadir mode, you get 30% increased crit per intensity. But the downside is spells which have gained intensity recently lose one, ten one intensity every 0.5 seconds. So basically by using these two jewels, you offset the uh, the gained intensity, um, you know, or the, the intensity loss and the intensity gain. So that's a net for net offset. It just completely nullifies out. What you have left is the ten negative 10% crit applied against the 30% plus crit. So you get 20% increased crit per each level of intensity, and you have four levels of intensity if you take the mastery on the tree. Plus on top of that, we get straight up, you know, 23 to 25% spell crit. So we get, uh, spell damage, sorry. So we get an extra 50% spell damage. So anyway, the end result of using these two jewels is that we can basically abuse the offset between the negative and positive impacts and get 80% increased crit into our build. And the best part about these two jewels is that they're worth three to five C each. Um, 
they're not very expensive and you could farm them because the drops on the highest maps are so frequent that you're not going to have any issues actually acquiring them and actually you could bring them into your end game setup um, and you could reduce crit somewhere else in the tree or somewhere else in your gearing because this is going to compensate sufficiently to get you to that 100% crit level um, that you need for the build. Anyway, really cool thing I picked up as uh, as I was building this uh, league starter guide. But uh, yeah, definitely what we're this is what we're going to do as part of our league starter tree. Now beyond that, I'll just go back to the tree. Now the gearing is just very specific to making it super easy to. Um, to level up and get an early character up to 1.3 1.4 million dps and mean to say if you could achieve this within the first day or first two days you would have a pretty powerful uh crackling lance character by day two um now configuration wise uh we can have that time spent stationary tick to one because of the uh the both the boots and also the gloves that we're going to be using we have power, maximum power frenzy and endurance charges if we didn't have that we wouldn't have the power charges, but we would be rolling a cast some damage taken level one cold snap, uh, which would be generating frenzy charges when enemies die on them. Now we have onslaught from our boots. We have adrenaline from our death rush. Uh, we have flask charges up. We have consecrated ground and we can take off shocked because we're not going to use that belt now. Um, so we've got about 60% effective life pool or a health pool with uh, simply just a, um, a bloody... Uh, max block character with um a shitload of armor so you know it's pretty damn good now have we been hit recently probably yes we're pretty tanky character physical ages is depleted because we're going to be getting hit so much um obviously that's going to be depleted so that's going to increase our damage a little more um and we always want to have four intensity and as you can see intensity is quite significant and pretty easy to sustain with crackling lance with a 6.18 um cast rate so on top of that, enemies are blinded. This actually applies to the use of the Eclipse Solaris, which is a really basic one. You get it at level 45. Does huge amounts of crit against blinded enemies, which is why we're using it. And it gives you crit multi as well early on. And the caveat is uh, nearby enemies are blinded. So that's what we have here. Enemies are blinded. We do shock because we don't have uh, brittle, uh, we don't have sap or anything like that. So just a moderate 10% level of shock. And this is all Cyrus damage, so it's not inflated bullshit damage. There's no negative modifiers. We're on consecrated ground because we're an Inquisitor, so, you know, go figure, we're going to Inquisit things uh, while on consecrated ground. So anyway, I'll, um, I'll go through the tree and uh, I'll give you a run through there and also gem setups. And, uh, and then, yeah, we'll just get into the sum up of the video and then I'll show you the... Uh, the more moderate version of the tree and the mage blood version of the tree okay so skilling in this one's pretty easy so we're actually going to be using because we have overcapped fire res on this um, at 81 percent with just the gearing that we do have really moderate gearing we're actually going to be using tempest shield and righteous fire as two of our auras on top of that we're going to move around with shield charge we're going to have cast some damage taken and molten strike and we're going to max level that and faster attacks to shield charge Crackling Lance, we're going to be running, and as you can see, no Awakened Jewels or Gems whatsoever. So we're going to be running Crackling Lance, Intensify, Spell Echo, Lightning Penetration, Inspiration, and Increased Critical Damage. Really huge focus on crit in this build. Uh, beyond that, we're going to be using Assassin's Mark, Arcane Surge, and Flame Dash. Now, Arcane Surge, you might have to play with that as to how you want the other skills to apply so you can actually get Arcane Surge to work. Um, and we're going to use Flame Dash and a combination of Shield Charge because Shield Charge is great for mapping. Flame Dash is going to be better for bosses in particular sort of bindy situations. Uh, so we also run Cold Snap and Cast from Damage Taken and we just want like a level 1 setup. Um, and the reason being is you want that to cast on the ground and then enemies die and then they uh, allow you to generate Frenzy Charges so you can cast faster even further. Uh, we're also running Zealotry and Determination, obviously two best auras for this build. You could switch this out for Wrath, um, but I don't think that this will actually. We can switch this out for Wrath and you will get a damage increase, which is fantastic. This is part of the fun of doing this build setup stuff. So yeah, if you switch this out for Wrath, you will actually get an increase to damage, um, which is uh, about up, you know, 80k, something like that. Now, I have got Val Haste in the build, and it's currently disabled in the tree. 
Um, but if you do use Val Haste, it gives you another 183,000 DPS uh, for a temporary period. I didn't want to put that in the tree because it is a bit of a distorter. Uh, and we do need to balance dexterity a bit better, but we, we can do that with dual socketing. Um, but if you get that, you're up to nearly 1.6 million DPS. Physical Age just comes off the shield and lesser shrines, you know, because we're using the gull, we're going to be shrine buffing all the way through maps early on. So we're going to be doing some serious damage there. That's pretty much for the gear, it for the gearing, like, uh, sorry, for the skill setups. Super, super simple skill setups. As you can see, there's no weird and wacky shit in here. The, the auras, they do balance out. So we have 119 uh, remaining mana and our skill only costs 37 to cast and we generate 91.9 .9 mana per second. So we can sustain the cast on the skill as well. Um, I'll also note there's no focus in here. So we have no focus mechanic in here whatsoever. And there's also something else in the patch notes that I noticed, which is they're taking focus away from amulets. But from what I can see, that's not going to affect our, um, our ability to use that with gloves, hopefully. But we'll find out the hard way, won't we? Um, so that's pretty much it for the, uh, the gem setups. Okay, so for the league starter tree, um, pretty much the way that we're going to go is from level 35. We'll start here. So level 35, we're going to come out from the tree. We're going to work our way down, pick up our Glancing Blow is going to be the first node we want, and also Iron Will because we do stack strength and Tireless. And then we want to really target down and pick up these resistance, these overcap resistance nodes because we're going to need it so we can run our, uh, our auras up and uh, also increase our Chaos Res and also our overall elemental resistance really early. Then from there, we get up to level 55. We'll come down and we'll pick up Solar Steel and Bloodless. And then we come up and we pick up these uh, these other nodes up here. And then we'll come back up the tree and we'll start working up and we'll get our Mental rap uh, Rapidity, which allows us to get our fourth level of intensity out of our build. Beyond this, we get to level 75. We're going to grab crack a Crackling Speed. Obviously, it makes sense grabbing Crackling Speed for Crackling Lands. You know, there we go. Um, and also we want to grab the, uh, the mastery point, 80% increased critical strike chance against shocked enemies, because we want to stack as much crit as we possibly can. Um, and then beyond that, we do come up and we pick up arcane potency and we start getting our aura node being sovereignty. So as you can see, we're not picking up the 15% reservation, um, uh, efficiency, uh, because it's no longer in the tree in the next league. Beyond that, we get to the level 92 tree, and this is when we start to pick up our other nodes down here. We come up and we do our full flesh out of our nodes up here, and pretty much pick up everything else. This is just the league start tree, by the way, so eventually you're going to get to a stage where you're going to be collecting your items to apply leadership's price and balancing your strength and your intelligence. Um, and so that's what we're going to talk about in the next section of the video. Once you've, uh, once you've started to pick up your gearing uh, for the next phase, which is the moderate tree. So this is where to get, we're going to talk about the moderate tree now. Um, and this is when you start to get to the end game and you know, you're doing a lot of other different stuff. Um, you're actually going to, now we can switch out between the two of these. Um, you're going to start doing a little bit of different stuff here. Um, and the main thing is you're going to switch your chest piece out. We're going to go for a brass dome. We're going to switch to a leadership's price now to be able to run the leadership's price you need to have equal strength and equal intelligence and so that's what we currently have and then beyond that we're also going to be picking things up like unnatural instinct we're going to be coming up here Oop. clicking buttons again didn't want to do that no power uh we, we inevitable we do not need inevitable in the build so we'll leave that one out that was something else i was testing a little while ago We'll have Intuitive Leap so we can pick up Infused Flesh. This is going to increase our defensiveness. As you can see, the total aggregate outcome of all of this is that we have a super amount of survivability that comes out of the build. Um, we can actually make that level 93 for the time being uh, with a little bit of moving room. And this tree is only two levels higher or one level higher than the last tree. Um, and now a lot of this will come from your farming from the previous League Starter version of this build. Uh, and once you get the Leadership's Price, Obviously, you'll get things like, you know, Brittle, which is going to increase damage quite significantly. As you can see, it has, still has a huge effect, even with 6%. Uh, and then we get to about 6.1 million DPS, right? Uh, and also, on top of that, we're running Arctic Armor at this stage. Val Haste, as well, is going to give us a huge boost. So Val Haste is basically 
going to be the boost that we used to get from our Eternal Blessing aura in the last league. It's not as powerful, but it sort of catches it up. Uh, we're going to have Corrupted Blood, you know, resistance built into the tree. The other big thing that you'll notice about this tree, absolutely no cluster jewels. So it's a hell of a lot more achievable. Now we don't, we do have a Watcher's Eye in here. Um, in particular, we did have one that was for critical multipliers with anger. You don't need that. You could go with something that applies wrath or zealotry or something like that. In this case, I am using zealotry as the main aura because it does enhance my crit. So if we switch the zealotry out for wrath, I actually remember finding that wrath was less powerful. So that's what I found in the end game. So actually it's pretty indistinguishable between the two. So technically we could go and we could, um, we could actually switch between the two depending on the types of watcher's eyes that are more available and the damage that you want. Um, that could dictate a pretty significant outcome for you. So I'll leave that open to interpretation. Actually, no, because that does give you a good damage increase. Um, so this is the second tree that'll be in the POV below. And this is where you start to balance. Now, as I get to this stage, when I'm doing this build uh, with you guys, I'll release a build guide for this as well. Um, and I'll be releasing progress videos because this is going to be my league starter as well. Um, but basically, this is going to get you through all the end game, up through killing Cyrus, up through killing Maven. This should pretty much go and body Maven pretty hard, like it'll face tank her pretty hard. Um, and we should be able to just push through, um, kill a heap of alls, get a heap of alls uprising, sell those off, uh, make a heap of currency, and then party down. Anyway, uh, itemization wise, we're looking at things like Bottled Faith. Uh, Cinder Swallow's actually got a pretty good impact on this, so. We're gonna run with that. Um, if not that, something else that makes it better. Um, whatever I can find that's gonna do better. Or, you know, we could run a diamond flask to absolutely max our crit. Um, and then basically we start looking at just minimaxing our gear, which is gonna be a combination of chaos res, all res, a lot of regeneration, and a lot of health stacked into the build because a lot of the balancing actually comes from balancing crit skills and itemizations in this build. But that's pretty much the moderate tree um, that we're going to get to after we beat the uh, the leveling phase. Um, so now we'll talk about the mage blood tree. All right, I've included this tree because you really can't not include it. This is a level 100 tree. So if you've got time to invest in grind mage blood, you've got time to uh, get to level 100. So as you can see, pretty much off the cuff, 184,000 effective hit pool. It's pretty damn tanky. Now, the way that Mage Blood generally works is we're going to stack in a melding of the flesh into the build. This is going to go negative resist, and then we slap our Mage Blood in, and then we use our flask to fix the build. Hence why Mage Blood I always refer to as a fixer item more so than a genuine gameplay item. But basically, we're going to use a Bismuth, Bismuth flask. We're going to uh, we're going to roll increased effect on the flask and additional elemental resistances and then also increased effect implicit off the uh, table craft, uh, the, the crafting table. And then basically we just seat this in, in the three leftmost areas of the tree, uh, sorry, leftmost areas of the flask sockets, and then the mage blood will pick them up and apply them. And in this case, I've also got chaos, granite for armor, and also bismuth. And that maxes out all my resistances to 89% because of the melting of the flesh. Now, melting of the flesh did get a nerf, but it's not going to be enough of a nerf to not make it super powerful um, and do exactly this. It will not even matter. It's still going to be ridiculous. Um, and then max chaos res. And basically, what's at this point going to actually kill me? And that's a great question. I just don't know the answer to that because I don't think much will be able to kill me unless it's like stupidly OP. Um, regen's high. Everything else is high. But the other big thing is we get to 10.15 casts per second and we hit just shy of 10 million with Crackling Lance, which, if it looked powerful before, is even more powerful and will just absolutely eviscerate enemies without any worries whatsoever. Now, skill-wise, the, you know, the big changes here, we're obviously running Awaken Spell Echo, you know, Awaken Lightning Penetration, but everything else is pretty much the same. We'll be running Phantasmal um, Crackling Lance because that actually gives us 10% increased cast speed. Um, for Righteous Fire, we'll be running Divergent because we get 20% increased spell buff. Um, so Divergent is definitely way better. It's a little more expensive, but it's worth every cent that you put into it from a Chaos perspective. Um, we still run, you know, our Zealotry Auras, Determination, um, but we'll be running Anomalous Zealotry for increased crit. 
and divergent determination and that's going to give us increased armor as well um and then basically uh an anomalous assassin's mark which is actually going to give us increased overall damage to cursed enemies uh and that's pretty much it like this is talking on once you can afford the mage blood and melting of the flesh you can achieve this um or close to so uh yeah that's pretty much the pure like ridiculous end game tree that's going to be like a mirrors plus level of investment but completely doable and it's probably going to send you down to like 1500 plus delve and you'll be making more stupid currency which is what my plan is i think i might go this far this league i'm not entirely sure but anyway let's get into how you sort of start the build and uh, at what level what level you get the gems okay so just going back to my notes um obviously with the leveling tree i've provided 35 55 75 and 90 uh, there needs to be how do we get started well pretty much with this like any inquisitor build just start leveling with freezing pulse it's the best leveling skill as far as most skills go um and then basically from there we're just going to level this up until we continue through to act three we'll be able to get crackling lance i believe from act three it's a level 28 gem um and then pretty much from there you're just going to be playing crackling lance and then following the uh itemization and gearing that's in this tree and the uh the skill tree layout which is you know it's all set down below um and that's pretty much it from a league starter perspective um yeah uh anyway um to sort of tidy this video up and sum up i pretty much think at this stage i've picked up on all the disadvantages of the nerfs that are coming in against this build but uh, I've also picked up on where we could power this up, definitely with things like Death's Rush and everything that's going to be super powerful. Now, the reason why I'm going to be playing this build is I just think it's going to be a great build. Um, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and definitely in testing it, it is super fun. Um, early leveling and gameplay and endgame, it's really, really, really strong. So, you know, we do have that advantage as well, so it's quite strong. Uh, getting to the Unbreakable boss in high, super easy as well to get the uh, Nadir and Apex gems. Uh, and then, yeah, there's just some really cool mechanics. The other plus side is that Crackling Lance has an increased beam width, uh, which will be from 10 to 12, and uh, will gain plus 3 to beam width per intensity, was 2 before, which basically means it's just going to absolutely rip through maps, so we'll look out for that and see what significance that is. But uh, anyway, hopefully this, uh, this uh, uh, League Starter Guide is helpful for you. You get a good idea for what you want to play. As I said, everything will be below in the description, including the uh, including the notes section of that POV that you can see there. All three POVs will be in the description. And uh, yeah, until next time, um, make sure you like and sub to the video. And by the way, there will be another build list out. This one's definitely going to go on it because this is going to be a crazy good build for this, for this coming league. Um, but yeah, until next time, have a good one and uh, bye.